wisdom I want to give you. So I'm in the car, right? I'm going through this car wash. And you know when you go through a car wash, they say always put your car in neutral. So, you know, I did that. And I'm sitting there and I'm putting my car in neutral in the car wash. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching them, you know, the sudsy things and all that other stuff. And, you know, that was really good. And um, when I get to the other side, there's a green light that says go. And then I got to pull around and then they finish up the car. So you've probably, you've probably experienced that same experience, right? So here's what happened though. I realized something that about neutral. And I talked about this once before with some people, but um, it's important. I really feel like um, before everything that was happening with this virus, I feel like a lot of people, like we were just all in neutral, like just neutral. The thing about neutral is that if there's a hill, you can't neutral your way up. Neutral can only take you down. Like, so with, when you're in neutral, you can either sit where you are, level state, or if you're on any angle whatsoever, go backwards. That's it. Those are the options with neutral. You'll never neutral your way up a hill. You can't neutral your way up to the next level. And so as I was sitting there in a car wash in neutral, and yet the conveyor belt was moving, I realized something, that there are a lot of people that are in neutral that they might actually think that they're moving forward. So what I thought, I think about this stuff, it's, it never it doesn't shut off, right? I'm thinking to myself that you think, like there are people that might think they're moving forward in neutral. And the reason why is because they're looking around them and they're seeing other people who have stopped. So, right? Someone who stopped has stopped. Now, if you're in neutral, you might be able to gain a little momentum. But why would you ever compare yourself to someone who stopped? Now, who stopped? They've stopped living their dreams. They've stopped chasing. They've start. They've stopped chasing themselves. You know, when you were a kid, you were so clear. Um, as we begin, as we get older, though, we stop chasing that person. Like, and that person's for real. Like, let me tell you something. The thing you have in your head is your God seed. So I believe that God gives us all a seed. Some are given the seed of song. They have an incredible voice. Some are given the seed of theatrical greatness. They can perform on a stage. Some are given the seed of being an amazing parent. Some are like we've all been, everyone's given a God seed. Like we're all given a God seed. Two problems. One problem is you compare your God seed that you're given to the God seat of somebody else. That's where the first problem kicks in. So maybe you're an amazing mother, but you're comparing yourself to that high part executive and you're looking at her like, well, I'm not good as her. No, in the thing you've chosen, which it has to be your choice. It can't be someone else's choice. In the thing that you've chosen, if you've chosen to be the high part executive or that great doctor or that great mother, whatever the things you've chosen, and that thing that you've chosen, all right, the question isn't, are you doing it? The question is, at what level are you doing it to? And so if you're a mother, but you're a mother in neutral, then the only option for you as a mother or a father in neutral is the moment there's a change, you will go backwards downhill. Hopefully that makes sense. But here's the other thing. The moment you realize that whatever the God see that you have in you, that there's more inside of you that you can do towards that, then you know that you can't go to the next level unless you accelerate. 
You can't. The, in order for me, when the green light says go to go, I must hit the accelerator. You must hit the accelerator. I must hit the accelerator. Now is the greatest time in world history to hit the accelerator. Now is the greatest time. Most people are watching other people. You need to hit the accelerator. You need to go from the neutral of your couch and you need to accelerate. Because if you are accelerating when the world is in neutral, man, you could change everything about your life. I really hope that made sense. And I said that was the last thing, but there's one last thing I have to the last thing that I just said was the last thing. Once you figure out the game you're supposed to be playing, um, there's zero value, zero. Matter of fact, there's less than zero value. There's zero value in you playing your game to beat someone else. And I know that's gonna sound. So someone asked where book am I reading? It's a book by Simon Sinek. It's about infinite, finite and infinite games. I recommend it, it's a good book. And one of the things I realize is that when I play my game of life to beat you, it is, now don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about sports. Sports are kind of legit. You scored 21 points, I scored 14, you beat me. That's sports. I'm talking about in life, life, not sports. In life, when you know what your purpose is, there is actually no competition. Only the competition you create. The problem with competing with somebody else is if you beat them, you might feel better about yourself. And if you lose to them, you might feel worse about yourself. But here's the problem. In both situations, feeling better about yourself or feeling worse about yourself, both things had nothing to do with you just deciding to actualize yourself. You see, the, um, let's see here. My Siri just kicked in. It's, it's impossible to, um, it's impossible to just compete and be your best version of you. The only you you should compete with is the you that you know is there and you just need to be chasing that you because that you is the real you. That you is the most important you there's ever been. That you that you see inside of you that you know is supposed to be there. Like, think about it. When you, don't you know if, you, like, there's just things that you're supposed to be doing that, like, like for real are just your things that you're supposed to be doing? Like, and I don't know what they are. Me, I found my business. I found I found my calling. I, I had no idea my business would be so important to me. I just thought, I thought you worked for money. I didn't know you really worked for purpose. Like, I really didn't. I, you know, I thought you worked to pay your bills and take care of your family. And so, I, I, you know, in the Bible, it says the kingdom of God is within. I want you to think about that for a second. It doesn't say the kingdom of God is right around the corner, make a left. It says within. It didn't say you have to die to find the kingdom of God. Do you know that? Do you know that it never said you have to die to find the kingdom of God? Do you know that the master teacher, like at least in the Christian faith, I'm sure other faiths have different uh, versions and values, right? That what I'm saying. But it never said the kingdom of God is like when you die. It says the kingdom of God is within. And, and the, whole, the whole purpose of why we're here is to get that thing out. That's it. Like to get that kingdom that's in out into the world. And maybe your kingdom is ministry or maybe your kingdom is parenting or maybe your kingdom is whatever. But I know this. I know that when that God seed is planted, there's an expectation to have that kingdom that's in you come out. So if it is within you and the seed was already given to you, how could you possibly compare your God seed 
to someone else's. You know, think about it like this. My fingerprint is unique, and so is yours. None, none of our two fingerprints are the same, which is how, you know, when people do naughty things, they, they catch them, right? So, man, if God could make a fingerprint so different for billions of people, think about this. Billions of people have a different fingerprint. And that's a physical thing. If God could pull that off with a physical thing, what could God do with a vision mental thing? I mean, this is physical. It's a fingerprint. That's complicated. Swirls and swirls and lines and, oh my God, like divots and birth symbols and all, there's a whole lot going on over there. Man, all God had to do is just drop a vision, bang, you're an architect. But don't just be an architect in neutral. Be an architect that's accelerating. Oh, bang, you're a daddy. Don't just be a daddy in neutral. Be a father that's accelerating. Whatever you're doing, accelerate. That's all I'm saying. Take this time to accelerate. If you're in business, accelerate. Everybody else is scared. You accelerate. I, I get it. Everyone's scared. Now, you could be scared with them. You could, hey, you can, you can, you can, with them. You could do that. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But my God, what happens when you don't do that? What happens when you just like accelerate? 